Good to go here. Perfect. All righty. Well, welcome back. Uh, we were actually off yesterday um, after the conference here, but uh, again, it's our Medicare gurus, our daily dojo. Uh, Jake Crotty here, again with the lovely Brad Jenkins. Uh, we have some stories from last week that I'm pretty sure we will dive into, um, but I kind of want to start it on something not Medicare related, but more perspective wise, because it actually kind of changed how I did some stuff today. Um, it's about Miller. <laughs> so uh, God bless Michelle, my fiance. She's been at the house for the past two weeks watching both dogs because um, last week we were at the conference and the week before that I was on vacation. Um, and so she's been just a trooper watching care, you know, making sure everything's okay, keeping the house together. Um, but that dog is so high energy. Yesterday, uh, you know, we ran errands and did all this. She was like, I just want to go to bed. And it was like five, six o'clock. Mm -hmm. And I was like, all right, you know what? You know, go shower, go lay down. I'll watch him and everything like that. So it gets to be about 7.45, 8 o'clock. He's been sleeping for like two hours. And I'm like, oh, man, if I don't, if I don't do something, he's just going to run rampant. He's going to be crazy. But I'm still tired from last week too and i'm like i'm like i'm like, I'm like i want to go to bed early you know it's six o'clock and i, I kind of laid down a little bit too and i was like whoo this would be a good one here and so i said you know what i'll take him to the dog park you know we'll take him to the dog park he can run around for a little bit i can't tell you he must have missed my truck because he got in the truck and i put that window down and he just immediately was like i haven't been able to do this in two weeks and I can just remember driving to it. And I was like, that bed looks so good. <laughs> oh, that bed and that cool air. You're finally at home sleeping in your own bed that I haven't slept in in two weeks. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was so nice. But seeing how how happy he was to be like, oh, I'm back in my favorite vehicle. Sticking his head out the window, going and playing. I was like, you know what? Maybe it's a good thing we went. Because not only did it burn some of his, well, he was still a little crazy when we got back. He's going to be crazy. He's just crazy. He's crazy in general. But it just kind of shows it's like he got so much emotion out of it. Mm -hmm. And it was one to where you can do this every day when you're on the phone or when you meet somebody in person because you don't know what type of impact you're going to have. But I swear I've never seen that dog smile like that before. <laughs> Finally back in the truck, his favorite spot. Michelle hates it because she thinks he's going to jump out. But I mean, he's, he's feet on the windowsill, face in front of the windshield. Like, yeah. like he's out there, out there. But I taught him something cool. Whenever we make turns, I'll tell him before we turn. So I'll go right turn, and he'll turn and look at me, and then he'll kind of brace a little bit, and we'll turn, and I'll go oh, left turn, cool. and he'll turn like, like lean this way. Uh, but it was just something that was just, just random that I got to thinking about, and I'm like, we do that a lot here without realizing. Well, you know, change is good, you know. If you do not constantly up a new way of doing things, and we, in some cases, we've been forced to do that over the years, and sometimes it can be uncomfortable, but change is good. You start to lose your mobile management after a while. If you're just doing the same thing, routine, same thing every day, you never grow. You never get outside your own box, mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> it does make you uh, realize new endeavors and you know, like I say, it can be a little bit uncomfortable initially, but it always turns out to be a growing event uh, down the road. And um, yeah, it's uh, that's just a way of life. It, it, yeah. it is, and you know, kind of speaking of going back to it as well. Um, so we just we just returned here Saturday night uh, from the eight percent conference uh, that was up in Dallas that Cody's asking teams put on, and what was kind of nice about that conference is that is a motivational conference mm -hmm. it's what it is it's not going to tell you how to underwrite a plan g it's not going to tell you what special election periods or enrollment periods there are for you to help somebody enroll in medicare but what it is it helps you to get the correct mindset when you're doing that and it's so funny because we had a few people a uh, few people go in the office and a few people that stayed back. And I can tell you who went, and I can tell you who stayed back by what by this morning mm -hmm. and the activity this morning. 
because the people that were actually there, I mean, you and me, we don't have to worry about it. We're going to, we're going to get to it immediately just because we got a lot of stuff we got to get to every day. Absolutely. Um, but the people that, that didn't go, it's a complete mindset is what it is where you can, you know, I don't want to say, you know, play the victim, but if you just keep having a bad day and a bad day, it's going to trickle down. It's right. already, it could be 10 o'clock and you could have two bad calls and you're really feeling it. You've already dug yourself in a hole that you're not going to get out of for the rest of the day. Versus like us here, if something like that happens, forget about it, move on. Like I had a, came back, I had a fresh decline, love it. Uh, but I called and figured it out. That's not going to stop me from 30 minutes after that. I had two referrals and it's two underwritten policies that are mm -hmm. already approved. I'm not going to let that bother me. But a lot of people that, you know, get into this industry, you really need to work on what's between here first. Because whatever mindset you have, whatever is going on, you know, the, the phrase is leave it at the door. You try as hard as you can, but a lot of that stuff is going to come with you. Absolutely. It, it really is. You just cannot let it affect how you sound and how you work. Well, you know, I think the key in general growth is you have to be able to handle good and bad. Mm -hmm. You know, you're always going to get good and you're always going to get bad. And it, it, it comes down to, okay, how are you going to tackle that? How are you going to handle it? You're going to let it ruin your day. You know, you're going to get depressed. You want to stay in bed for a week, you know. It sounds good. <laughs> I mean, but <laughs> I know. But, uh, you know, life goes on. I mean, and in sales, you don't have any choice. I mean, you have to be on your game. You have to be in a good mood. You know, you have to be excited. And um, you have to just be aware of the task at hand. I um, mean, you know, there's a time to, you know, get upset. The key is, you know, you got to handle things that you can handle and what you can't handle. Don't worry about it. You know, prime example of that is Brad Jenkins himself here. So we got to Dallas on Monday. <laughs> yeah. Monday, sorry, Tuesday morning, we wake up and we go, Brad, you moved your truck? He goes, nope. Brad got his truck stolen. Yeah. So Tuesday morning busy calling the insurance company, police department, everything like that. He still goes out and sells six policies later that week. It doesn't stop because you have that mentality that, yes, this is bad. There's only certain things that I can do in this situation to control it. But at the end of the day, I got to make money. Mm -hmm. I got to, I got to do something because I need a check. <laughs> yeah. Not only that, a lot of people depend on you. You know, I, got a lot of clients say they need answers. You know, they depend on me to get things done. That doesn't stop, you know, um, still have to, you know, maintain. And, you know, yeah, it, it's something else on your plate that you have to deal with, you know, it kind of muddies things up a little bit, but you move forward, you know, and just, you, you get it done. And, um, yeah, <laughs> I'm still dealing with that. I think one one thing that kind of stuck with me, and it's not necessarily, um, you know, I'm like, well, oh, this is just the greatest takeaway I could have ever, but you really need to have a goal in mind every day. Like this morning, my goal today was to sell two policies in the morning. And the reason why is because, so I lost my wallet, you know, a month and a half ago, right? So there's or almost two months now. Um, but I had all my bills and my credit card. Wake up this morning, uh, 5 a.m., turn the TV on to watch the news. It says, Sunlink is in brick mode. And I go, what the heck is this? Brick mode. So then I tried the internet. Internet doesn't work. I go, well, my shell starts working an hour. I got to leave at 6.15 to go take the dog to the daycare place and then come back. So I've got maybe... 40 minutes to get this taken care of and then shower and get ready and leave the house. Uh, so at 5.05, I had to call suddenly and it turned out that that was the one thing I forgot to update with my car was our 
internet and TV service. So we didn't have internet, we didn't have TV. And for somebody who works from home, uh, I tried to take care of it before she could find out. So now she's finding out. We were late on the suddenly bill because my car. But what I didn't know is there was a late fee of $168. Oh, nice. For two months. And it was normal balance, everything like that, but $168 because I never once got an email. I didn't get a text notification that the payment didn't go through, nothing like that. But you know what? They'll turn off your, your stuff real quick. Mm -hmm. But in my head, after I got my card out, I had to do the phone thing where you type it in and then they update the billing, everything like that. In my head, I immediately just go, I got to make up this 168 somehow. I got to do something about it. Right. Because that was not a calculated cost. It was an additive that was not expecting, but that's where I think a lot of people, you need to find that almost the kind of that daily goal of, I have this expense. This is what I need to sell in order to cover. And you got it done. Yeah. Yeah. You got it done and got more planned here. So if there's anything else that's late, hopefully that'll take care of it. <laughs> but that was, that was my big takeaway is if you, if you set it out, you're more than likely going to accomplish it. It's the people that come in and they just say, oh, I'm going to make some sales today. Or, no, I'll see where it goes. Well, at that point, you don't have anything that you're fighting for. Mm -hmm. You don't. I think we were talking about jobs. So I had to give Brad a ride home uh, Saturday night and we came back. So, you know, we were just talking in the truck, but we were talking about different life experiences with different jobs uh, before doing this. And kind of recognizing when not necessarily there's a dead end, but there's no room for growth. There's no challenge. So I was telling him a story about how in college I worked at this uh, feed store called Producers in Bryan, Texas, and worked there for three years. And right before I graduated, I had to do an internship and I went off and I came back and I just took a job or was about to take my first job in Florida working for a hockey team. And they said, hey, look. Um, we know you're graduating. We know this isn't what you got your degree in, but if you want to become like the warehouse manager, you can. It's like, we have an open position. We'd love for you to do it. Just think about it. I said, okay. Well, I went home and thought about it. There's not really any goals to that job. Yeah. You're stuck. That job, that job is show up at 7 a.m. Make sure everybody else showed up at 7 a.m. Make sure none of the customers complain when they're loading their trucks or their trailers and make sure everybody leaves and clocks out by five o'clock. That's all that job was. You're babysitting for eight, nine hours a day. And then every other Saturday you get off. But I had that recognition to it. And I go, and look, if, if I take this job, that's how you get stuck. Yeah. You know, some people get comfortable with that. Some people want jobs like that. But if you have the mindset that your growth is infinite, you know, whatever you really want and your desire, it's there for you. And you have to chase it. You have to do all the right things. You have to set your goals. You have to, you know, maintain a lot of things, you know, but it comes down to growth and when I was younger, I mean, I worked in a warehouse too, and it was mundane, you know, um, driving forklift trucks mm -hmm. and that sort of thing and handling, you know, all the shipping things. It's, but it's, it's a daily routine. You get used to it. You just keep doing it. You show up, you go home and then what, you know, you have another routine at home, you get up and you do the same thing. I don't think we were really designed for that. Yeah. You know, uh, that's what we're society is kind of, morphed a lot of people into that to where you're basically a robot you know yeah i mean you could any any type of job you have that can be replaced by a machine <laughs> <laughs> you know you have to wonder what you're doing um <clears throat> you know the human interaction that's what i like about sales same thing with you is the the human interactions that we have and they're all different you know, everybody's different. You talk to people on the phone, it's the relationships and it, it's a constant influ, influx of new new experiences, you know, every day, you know, and depending on what goes on. And sometimes, uh, you know, the bad things turn into good. 
you know, um, you know, somebody gets declined and I can figure it out and get them written with somebody else, find out why they got declined. Then all of a sudden, you know, I did something good for somebody else and it just increases my relationship with them, you know, um, if you hang in there and, it's, and do it. It's, it's just like you're saying, it's all about perspective of what mm -hmm. it is, where people get so bogged down with, I just want to do the most mundane, same thing over and over mm -hmm. again. Well, that's what leads to burnout. That's what leads to people not succeeding. If I were to tell you your sales goal is whatever you sell, yeah. if, it, if it's not two a day, four a day, 20 a week, whatever it is, if you're not striving for anything, you think you're going to be good? You think you're going to have a lot of effort? No way. No, <clears throat> not, not at all. So for people that come in, and their daily goal is just to, I want to sell something. That's not a goal. That's first off, that's your job. That's what you should be doing mm -hmm. already. If you get a paycheck for selling something, then you better be selling something. But your goal is to make it yourself, but then attain it. Like we just got a new lead source here today that we are trying out that are um, their type of live transfers. But more specifically, they are not decent candidates they are not on medicaid um, they are qualified supplemental candidates which we love well mm. the very first one i was a guinea pig they're, they're making me and brad be the guinea pigs for them here um, i got the very first one it was a rough transfer the guy didn't even introduce himself that was transferring the lead was like i don't know what the hell is going on here um, i don't know what we're talking about but it's one that I knew once we started doing these leads, okay, you need to slow down and have a conversation with them. Just first and foremost, just talk to the person to feel it out and see what's going on. Because so many people in here, you get real anxious. You're straight to it. What can I sell you? Oh, I can't help you. Bye. Well, with this lead source too, since we do kind of have to dive in, since we're testing it here, he was turning 65. Uh, actually next month, he already got his Medicare card. Uh, they already signed him up. He already signed up with a drug plan. He already had all that, but he is on, uh, he's actually native American. So he is on the uh, Cherokee nation. So he has that hospital that he goes to for all his major stuff. He's also on sooner care, which is Medicaid for the state of Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And he's already signed up with Medicare and he lives about 40, 50 miles away from the nearest town. So for him, you know, people would immediately go, you're on Medicaid, I can't sell you supplement. This is a bad lead, sorry. From the second that he said, well, I think I got a Medicare card. And I said, all right, well, let's, let's figure this out here. Cause he goes, I don't know what's going on. They just start sending me stuff. I go, okay, I'll help you with that. It was in Medicare and I'm just asking, you know, by chance, are you on sooner care? Said, yeah, I've been on it for about six years, okay. At that point, that's where agents would go, <sighs> you know, we're testing a new lead source here. This guy's that's not even a viable lead, which technically he's not for what we're using it for. But for us, it's still a person on the other end of the line, mm -hmm. a person who is very confused, but a person that we can also help. It doesn't just have to be supplement. We can help you with something else. In that case, there it wasn't a valid supplemental lead because he had Medicaid, but we can still help him. So I was going through everything with him. It was about a 45 minute phone call, but we were just explaining to him how Medicare and Sumer Care work in conjunction, uh, comparing his uh, Cherokee Nation, um, that system of hospitals to almost like VA coverage. Cause it's a really good comparison. That's essentially what it is. Is that available online? The, the Cher Cherokee? Yeah. yeah, so you can go in, you can see their, their, their hospital networks and stuff like that. But that's exactly how I had to explain it to him because it's just like the VA. Mm -hmm. If you're a part of the Cherokee Nation, you can go to the Cherokee hospitals. You can be seen by the Cherokee doctors, and it's all zero. So, like, he's getting his medication through the Cherokee Nation, even though he has a drug plan, but he has to have it. So if he ever does get off Medicaid, he's going to get a Part D penalty. So I was like, that's really smart that you did or whoever helped you do that. That was really good. But it's the same as VA to where if you go outside of it, though, that's when you're in the hands of Medicare, Medicaid. 
But as long as he's going to that, he's he said it's completely free. Yeah, he probably doesn't travel at all or anything like that. He said he's got a he's got a rusted out truck from the seventies that he just hopes he can get to A to B. That's it. But but bless his heart, he had a whole list of conditions. He had some diabetes, cirrhosis of the liver, oh my. Uh, past heart attacks, you know, things like that to where that's also a very important question to bring up because he is not that healthy, which for him, if he was not on Medicaid, if he was just coming on to Medicare, a supplement would have been his best option because he is going to use it. But in that case, they're talking to him. If he goes to an Advantage plan, they're going to start telling him no to some of the places that he goes. Because we looked up a few doctors, and it was kind of wishy-washy. There were some companies like United Healthcare would have worked. Mm -hmm. But the way that he was set up, he's got his Cherokee Nation that helps with dental, helps with vision, helps with hearing. He has starting Medicare and Medicaid in conjunction, which means he can go to anybody in the state of Oklahoma. Yeah. And guess what? The state's going to pay for it. The only benefit that he would have had would be like an over-the-counter card. And I, I told him straight up, I go, you do not want to risk not going to the doctors that are available to you over $150 for vitamins and Band-Aids a month. You don't. But he didn't know any of that. Of course not. Because a lot of people, once he said, yeah, I'm on sooner care, that conversation would have stopped. That, that's the people that don't have goals in mind, that aren't goal-oriented, is you're so focused on, I have to make a sale. I just need to make a sale. Just let me make a sale, then I'll make a goal, or then I'll talk about you know something else. You know, Once I get one, then I'll get two, and I'll get kind of hot. Okay, I just need to make a sale. Well, if you limit yourself at that point, it's not a sale. You're just going to be done, and you're going to stop thinking of them as a person and start thinking of them as a number on the board. That's like what you always used to say, love the one you're with, mm -hmm. you know, you can't judge situations like that. I mean, you help the guy. I mean, he's got friends, mm -hmm. family, you know, and if you help him and he remembers, he'll remember your conversation because mm -hmm. you're the one that helped him. It's just like you say, he, he's probably been blown off by a lot of people mm -hmm. and, um, you know, he's still searching for if he, he got contacted by, you know, whoever. He's still searching for answers if he put his information out there. Still confused, doesn't know what he has, doesn't know what to do. Nobody's going to help him, but you helped him. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he's going to remember that and pass your name on. Somehow, some way, that stuff tends it's to It's going to come back. back. It's, it's all karma. It comes back. That's what it is. You know, and I used to say, too, you know, you're having a bad day, just make more cold calls. Mm-hmm. You know, activity creates activity, even though it may not be the most productive. Somehow, I mean, that will come back within the next few days. Things yeah. just happen to turn around, you know. Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, that's, uh, uh, hey, Stefan. There's Stefan. Mm -hmm. Well, what, uh, oh, did you make me forget? Yeah, you did. Uh, no, I got it here. One thing kind of piggybacking off of that, we're, we're talking about kind of goal setting and stuff like that. Just some of the things that came up at the conference. Um, you know, the one thing I hate that is, it's not a KPI, it's not a performance tracker, but it is sort of a stat tracker. I hate sales boards. I, I, I know why they're there. You need to look at them, mm -hmm. yes. But I hate sales boards because there have been so many people that have come through and instead of saying, I want to help this person or instead of saying I need to get paid because I have bills, I have stuff I have to pay off. People care more about that dang tick mark on the board than the one that they're helping or the actual money that's coming in. And I have just never understood that how a number on a board is more important to you than helping someone, but what you're actually earning. We've had quite a few people come come here just, you know, through throughout the years that are kind of like that, where they don't care about the money, they don't care, they care about the person, but they really care about that board. Yeah, I call that tick brain. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I, I had an experience at, at the show, I, I wrote a $20,000 final expense policy. Mm -hmm. 
and I hear it quite often, you know, it's an extra tick on the board, you know, oh, you don't need a whole lot, you know, two, $3,000, you know, these are small things. Yeah. Well, you know, what's that going to do? $2,000. I yeah. mean, by the time they die, that's probably going to pay for gas to the funeral company. <laughs> you know? I mean, you have to really understand and communicate with the people, find out what they need. Don't just go low to get a sale, thinking it, you know, numbers, numbers, numbers. Oh, they can't afford that. If I if I quote them a high number, they're not going to buy. It. Well, you don't know because you haven't talked to them about it. You know, find out what they want. You know. I started getting 20, 25,000, 30,000. He was losing his uh, $100,000 uh, term plan that he had through work in three years. Mm -hmm. But they realized that this stuff is expensive, you know. But it, it's true. You know, when we hear that, um, people will just try to get things just to make it look good up there. And whether they get declined or canceled, mm -hmm. they know it's, it's just. Uh, just throw them out on the wall but um yeah i mean you really have to you really have to have a conversation with people to find out what they want um what do they need which is even more important you know mm -hmm. and um you know just make it work because um yeah the mentality of just slinging stuff up there I, i've never been one of those people I'd rather sell, uh, I can remember back in the day where, um, just throw out some insurance companies named New Era came out and the rates were really low, but they said, you know, in Texas and Georgia, we're only gonna, you know, you're gonna make $30 commission. Well, people wrote like popcorn. Mm -hmm. Aetna, on the other hand, was a paper app, 25 pages you have to initial and sign, and it took a lot of work, but you know, you're making $120 a sale. Mm -hmm. I sold the Aetna plans. You know, I used to hear it all the time. Well, I, you know, I got 12 up there today. What do you have? <clears throat> well, I have five, but I mean, I'm get paid more than you. Yeah. You, you know, and <laughs> the company made more money too. You know, mm -hmm. <clears throat> it comes down to, um, you know, profitability really, but also, you know, what are you doing for the client? I mean, um, but I'm with you there. You mm -hmm. know, I hate that mentality. Um, and I like the board when I'm on top. But I don't even, <laughs> yeah, I don't even want to look at it when I'm not. But you know, that's just human nature. Well, it's also kind of what we do in this industry. Um, you know, we are competing against each other. You're competing against every single person that calls their phone. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it's you. You are your only competition. Because if you get somebody on the line and you can't sell it or you can't help them or you just can't be a person and talk to them right. without coming off as salesy, you lost to yourself. Because maybe you weren't prepared enough. Maybe you didn't have the right mindset. Maybe you didn't have the right approach. Um, that's why with those final expense policies, like the two, three thousand, they're like eight bucks a month. Um, it's a joke. Yeah. But you need to. Do that discovery instead of just rushing through it. Like, bless Christine's heart here. She kind of ran through one this morning. So she said the lady was ready for quotes, everything like that. Brought me on the line. She goes, I don't even know what's going on. I've, I've, had, a, I've had a long morning. I work nights and everything. Like that. I just want to go back to sleep. So, all right, you go back to sleep then. Because apparently there was something in there that was either rushed, she didn't do enough homework, or there's no perception of value into it. And she goes, well, don't you just want to see the numbers? Don't you just want to see the numbers? First off, anybody watching that, that is not how you sell anything in this world over the phone or in person. Numbers is for online enrollments for car insurance, not for healthcare. Because you just can't go online and sign up for healthcare just like that. It's a whole lot of crap that you got to go through. Okay. Don't know what you're getting. That's why you have to put one of our names on the application saying somebody else signed off on this. You can't just go do it yourself. So anytime I hear, do you just, let him just tell you the numbers. I go, I'm not even going to talk to that person because there's no point to. There's no homework being done. There's no discovery upon why they need a final expense policy. Why is the big definitive thing within this industry that you have to 
get out there. Talking back about the Oklahoma guy, you know, his question was, you know, how does this work? You know, what happens? I also had to explain to him why he doesn't see any charges, why his prescriptions are $3 when he gets them filled, why he can go to any doctor that he wants to on Medicare versus being stuck in a PPO. Mm -hmm. These are all the things that you should be asking when you're doing your discovery, when you're making a conversation. Why is something this way? Let me teach you why this is this way. So you can go and teach other people. But just like you're saying, it's such a common thing to where they think eh, it's eight, 10 bucks. They'll take it for sure. They'll take it. They'll cancel it within two months because they don't know what they got. So when it comes to those questions, you really need to be on your game, but not be afraid to ask the hard stuff. You and know? you have to create value. Yeah. You have to create value, but you also have to understand where they're coming from. Because if they say, look, I just have, I only have my spouse in my life and she's 20 years younger and I'm just going to be cremated. I don't really have that much family. Do you think they need $25,000 in final expense? Right. You know, you're going to need more than two. You're going to need more than five nowadays and going forward. But if you are using it as solely, and you have to figure out why they want to use it. Do you want to just pay for a cremation? Do you want to pay for a cremation and a celebration of life? Do you want to pay for a cremation, celebration of life, and then have some left over yeah, to get? Have some left over. You want to leave something for the kids or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, That's yeah. why I, I hate to say it, but I, I use the Frank Bryant method every final expense I do with the, the three different offerings. But that's how I started phrasing it now. I say, look, um, from what we've talked about, you know, we have kind of a, we're on the bigger side here. We have a big family. You kind of want a lot of things mm -hmm. done. Let me give you these. Here's 7500 That's going to take care of cremation, everything like that. Okay. Then you can look at $11,000, $12,000. This is going to take care of cremation and celebration of life if you have to fly people in. You're having a party that's what that's made for and the last one which would be 15 17 20 thousand dollars look this is for your cremation this is for your you know party mm -hmm. that people are going to have but then as well if you have anybody specific that you just want to leave a little bit of money to this is not a oh my god my life changed with just one check kind of, we're not playing i said this joke we're not playing publisher's clearinghouse today on the line with the lady does called for a birthday she loved it but that's what it is. It's you're taking care of the cremation, the celebration, and you also have some left over. And majority of the time, guess what they pick? The third one. Yeah. Well, I like your line too. You know, who, who takes care of you? Yeah. Who's the person that takes care of you in your life? You know, mm -hmm. uh, that's going to have to deal with everything. And, you know, we want to make sure that they're taken care of and have the funds to do it. You know, it gets them thinking in the right direction instead of just looking at numbers, you know, because mm -hmm. numbers can change, you know, economy can change. But, uh, yeah. and before we get to Stephanie, you see how he's doing today. Uh, people don't buy numbers. People buy off of emotion. So anytime, look at this quote, look at this quote, look at this quote. You can quote me 40 different things. If I have no emotional tie to it or know what I'm looking at, or how it works, I'm not buying it. Mm -hmm. Not doing anything. Because guess what? I don't care about it. There's no reason for me to. Uh, that was my little soapbox. Thank you. Do the same way. That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, Steph is. So. It's just like, mm -hmm. you know, shopping for widgets or, in my case, a, a new vehicle and looking at trucks. You know, it's an mm -hmm. emotional sale. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to want that particular product. You know, I mean, you want what it does and everything else, but there's a lot of emotion in, in that whole thing. Um, and that's what they, they prey on. When I was selling remodeling, you know, we listened to this guy, uh, Rick Grosso, and he talked about this story about, you know, uh, buying a boat. And the boat salesman, he, uh, he drove up to him with the boat, you know, he was out on the lake. And he did all this stuff. And he's like, I just had to have that boat, you know, didn't care what it cost. Mm -hmm. You know, he just had to have it. And, um, you know, people go into a different mindset when you start to delve into them emotionally. 
because you know if you create the value and find out what they really want to achieve and you're going to take care of that for them mm -hmm. and handle everything for them money really doesn't become an object anymore to a certain extent mm -hmm. it's got to be within reason but they'll uh, they'll pay more money you know to go with a certain company or whatever just be based on experiences that uh, they had prior, <clears throat> excuse me, or, you know, friends, they'll listen to their friends before mm -hmm. they'll listen to uh, any of us first, you know, they'll listen to their, oh, so-and-so had that and they didn't have to pay anything and blah, blah, blah. And, <laughs> you know, that, that. <laughs> you, just, you just reminded me. Um, shout out to Rebecca Davis, um, who's been in here before. Um, it's the Medicare Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. uh, she actually had a TikTok because we were we were perusing through some of the people that were there at eight percent their TikToks, and she actually had one that that we all loved because she goes, just because your friend's plan is the best one, doesn't mean it's the best one for you. And when you said that too, where they're like, yeah, man, we love this plan, we love this United Healthcare plan. It's so great to us. Well, none of your doctors take United Healthcare. It's not going to be worth it, but guess what? You don't see that. Mm -hmm. You see the your value is more in their opinion and actually finding it out. That's why emotion is so important in this industry. And in anything that you do, you got to tie it in mm -hmm. or else you are not going to be successful. It's that simple. You have to ask the right questions. Yeah. So, Stefan, enough, enough of us talking. How are you doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> I'm glad that everyone's back uh, and uh, the energy is a little bit better <laughs> than just me and uh, two tech guys out there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think uh, I like these uh, dojos because I always learn stuff, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think uh, I did sell uh, one uh, like that last week and you were on the phone with her and I, I remember you going through all the mm -hmm. process and giving her a choice mm -hmm. and then she actually picked the choice after she understood uh, what she needed you know mm -hmm. which is like the highest one too yeah. they, they always do they always do unless it's really a money unless it's really hey we love it but I gotta I gotta put bread on the table but, well, right. then, you yeah. have to be able to afford it I, I didn't mm -hmm. know though uh, that like the premium and the benefit actually it, it stays static right mm -hmm. correct so like in a day in, in, in like current kind of environment where the inflation is like going crazy if the inflation stays pretty high then how do they adjust like as time goes do they have to buy like a newer one or do they nope. buy another one and add on to it so here, I will give you my entire, and you can write this down word for word. This is the final expense pitch here. This is how you describe it. So we can talk about all of it and go first. Let, let me explain to you what it is. First off, it is a whole life policy. So if you buy it at 60, you buy it at 70, you buy it at 80, you have that policy for your entire life. It does not expire. It does not go away. Uh, you can also eventually down the road, it build some cash value that you can borrow against, but we don't really bring that up because it's just an extra detail to confuse people, but it does. Second, your benefit level never changes. So if you get $5,000 now, 10,000, 20,000, that is with you through the entire duration of that policy. It never goes up. It never goes down. Now, let's just say cremation right now is $5,000. Well, you think, okay, I need to buy this for a cremation. Let me get a $5,000 plan. It doesn't mean if you still have the plan 10 years down the road that cremation is going to be five thousand dollars by that time with inflation it could be seven eight nine twenty thousand whatever it is right. but that five thousand that you have does not change it is still there to the moment that whoever the beneficiary is has to cash that policy out now the premium doesn't change either so if you're paying twenty dollars today for five thousand dollars ten years from now you're still paying twenty dollars for 5,000. There is no adjustment for inflation. Nothing goes up. And at that point, that's when I say, okay, so that's exactly what the final expense policy is. Now go grab a pen and paper because I want to give you three different numbers. And I'll explain what these numbers kind of mean here. That's it. That's the entire pitch right there. Did I go into 
okay, this policy is going to mature in about 16 to 17 years, depending upon what benefit level you get, what premium. So if you get it when you're 60 and you pass away when you're 76, then technically you have paid your premium. Um, did I go into yeah. the, yeah. you know, the cash out mm -hmm. process? Did you go into too much? No. But can they buy, what do they do? Do they buy another plan then? Yeah, you can always buy more. Okay. You can always buy more. There, there are plans out there that do adjust for inflation. Mm -hmm. uh, you know the final expense policies we offer mm -hmm. do that. But you know some of the cancer policies and that sort of thing that you can so you, you can purchase a ride. Buy a five thousand today, and let's say down the road the cremation is eight thousand. Do you just buy another policy for three thousand, or do you do an adjustment on the five thousand to eight thousand? You just get another policy. Another policy. Yeah. So you can have multiple policies. Because here's here's the thing with it. So let's let's that's actually I'm really glad you brought this up because this is a really good learning experience for you too. Say right now you are 65 years old and you have a policy for five thousand dollars. Okay. Say it's 10 years down the road, you still have that same policy. Back when you were 65, the cremation was five thousand dollars. You know you're gonna pass away in two weeks, but a cremation is now ten thousand dollars. You can't just call Edna and say, hey, uh, can you bump that up to 10000 I'm going to die here pretty soon. Right. Oh, you can? I'll, I'll, I'll pay a little bit more for one month, and then I'll just cash a check. Okay, thanks. Bye. Click. That's why that doesn't happen. That's why you have to reapply for it. So in this case here, if you're now 75, you're dealing with a higher premium to where you might have been paying $20, $30. Now that is going to be 40 to 60 But also you're subject to that same company underwriting. That's how you got it in the first place. You know, we're using Aetna here as an example. You have to go through their health questions. Sure, you could have qualified just fine when you were 65 and you've got $5,000 for 20 bucks a month. But if you're 75 and you know, okay, sooner or later, I'm going to pass away here. I don't have that many years left, but I really want to bump it up. Unless you can pass those health questions again, you can't get another policy through Aetna you got to look somewhere else, like Gerber or somebody that's a guaranteed mm -hmm. issue guaranteed and it doesn't policy. ask health questions. But here's the caveat to those is, I'm sure you've seen them too, where now you're 75, that policy might be $40 here if you're healthy and can answer the health questions. It's probably $70, $80 at the minimum if you can't. But the caveat that they use, and this is why it's guaranteed issue, is you have to have that policy for at least two years right. before they pay out. And that's, it's also company specific too. But what that means is you can't be, no, okay, you know, more than likely I've got 90 days to live. I need to go get a final expense policy from Gerber. You sign up for $20,000 and it's 120 bucks. Well, guess what? If you die the next month and you already paid, you're not getting that money, that benefit amount. What they'll do is they'll say, here's your premium back. Here's 10% here's I'll sprinkle on top. So out of, if you have $20,000 policy, Here's two grand I'll sprinkle on top. There you go. But that's why a lot of people get so into the details that it confuses them. So the easiest way to explain it is, you've you heard, you probably heard me say it too on the phone last week, that the premium never increases, your benefit never decreases. That's it. And it pays out immediately. Mm -hmm. You know, some insurance policies, they can go into probate, funeral company, they want their money right away. And a lot of people will turn over their policy, leave a lot of money on the table. They say, well, here, here's the policy, you guys just take it. I, I don't want to deal with it. And they lose a lot of money that way. But these policies are designed to pay out. You show them a death certificate, they get the two years, it's 24 hours or something like that. It's but, also It's also a very emotional sale is what it is. That's why I love the... You know, the question about who takes care of you or, you know, before we even quote, I want to know, you know, who's who's going to be who's in charge? Who's this? Because then guess what? When we get to those different what, benefit amounts that we're offering and different mm -hmm. premiums, so you can say, look, so here's five thousand for I'll just use Chris as an example. This five thousand will go to Chris. Chris can pay this for your cremation. This five, this ten thousand will go to Chris to pay off the cremation, and he can schedule the party and everything like that. But this fifteen is for Chris to pay for the cremation, schedule the celebration of life, 
But then as well, Chris gets some money too for, for handling everything. Because people hate to be relied on by other people. They hate it. Everybody wants to do everything on their own. You don't want to have to not be able to help or to assist. Mm-hmm. You know, you feel bad when that happens. So for a lot of those people, if you can frame it that way, it's like, look, this is a policy for you, but it's not really for you. It's not. It's for the living. It's for who is left to take care of everything. And you know what's funny? When I was on vacation, one of those commercials came up, and my mom goes, Jay, do you do that? And I go, yeah. And he goes, well, how much do you think it would be for us? And I'm like, I'm like, y'all were like 57. I was like, you've got rheumatoid arthritis, and dad's a type 2 diabetic and only has one eye. <sighs> All right, we can, we'll, take, we'll take a look here. And I go, who's paying for it? They go, well, you'd pay for it. And I go, well, then I'll, I'll, I'll get y'all a rosary. <laughs> but it's in your case in your case here with you know just learning and everything like that you don't need to spit off everything we talked about you don't need to because if you do and you don't say it correctly or if it doesn't match up for what the policy is you know it's only going to hurt you more so it's good to i had to go through it with christine this morning where she brought me on we were talking about you know the numbers thing before but it's one if you're not confident in presenting it you know when you're doing your discovery you say great you know what i can do jacob is more of the expert of that or that's more brad's realm because i don't want to tell you anything wrong i don't want to give you any misinformation so i would rather have them address it than me here so you know exactly what we're talking about and people appreciate that they really do when you tell somebody look i can't help you but I know either some way or someone who can. You're being honest with them. Because it's not some type of sales tactic. It's not a sleazy thing. It's not any of it to try and say, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll get them over the other person. It's no. You genuinely have to say, look, I can't help you with that. But I know somebody who can. Let me ask them because I don't want to tell you what's wrong. Because I guess what? If Christine would have done that, we would have had a final expense policy today. But she skipped it and just went to, all right, here are the numbers. That's why. But, again, great question. Give me some more because I love all your questions. Yeah. Well, I mean, that was that's part of the script. And it's, it's actually asked very early, mm-hmm. not actually late. So it's one of those things, if you try to go back at the later time, it's not as good because uh, – is you're already into something else, you know, but when you're doing it early, including the indemnity kind mm-hmm. of plan and stuff like that, they'll kind of tell you, like the lady actually just straight up told me like, hey, I want to know about the, you know, the, the burial expense, right, plan. And I said, okay, well, we can address that when that time comes. You know? yeah, it's it's you, more like a, do you have one or, you know, what sort of insurance uh, coverages right. do you have? You know, so we can take a look right. at it, maybe weed out some of the things you don't need and just right. make sure and that I, you're taking care of. I only talked to her, like, very basically, right? Mm-hmm. So what I asked was, like, do you have a big family? Because mm-hmm. I remember Jacob asking that, like, do you want to be cremated or do you want to just, you know, just get buried on the ground, which is cost different, right? Do you, mm-hmm. you know, do you want to leave some money for your family? You know, do you have a big family? Are they going to be celebrating? You know, who... Who's gonna like actually handle those? And it was two of her daughters. Mm-hmm. So without even going to any, because I don't know any of the specifics, I just basically set it up so later on, mm-hmm. hopefully when Jacob gets in, he can kind of talk to her and she's already, her mindset is like, okay, he's mm-hmm. gonna tell me about these different things. Well, it always gets a little bit tricky um, talking about it too, because there are times to where, you know, what, what is it, uh, imitation? is the sincerest form of flattery. A whole lot of imitation goes on the office because people will find stuff that they say and people will like. Uh, Like, I can't remember who, uh, it was was Kim or somebody else, but it was something that like only I would say, like in my accent too, and like talking slow like I do on the phone. But she tried to do it and I was like, that just doesn't sound, I can tell that's not you saying that. That's you listening and you saying something too. 
but the issue that you run into, especially with kind of what we're doing now, um, where, you know, you do have mentors around you that are helping you versus you being on your own. There are some times where when I'm doing the discovery, it just depends on how I'm feeling it out. I'll ask those questions at the start because I know at the end, you know, I'm not going to have anybody that I'm transferring to. It's just me here. Right, right. So I can kind of get those from the beginning um, and ask them, you know, do you have a big family? Do you have all that? But what people get mad at is when you try to imitate, but then guess what? The guy that you just imitated, you have to bring on the phone now and guess what he's going to say? The exact same thing that you already said, because you've heard him say it a thousand times. Right. And I forgot it was uh, the spaghetti on the wall. That's what it is. I, I use that. We talk about med subs. We talk about a lot of stuff. We go, we're not just throwing noodles on the wall to see which ones stick. We're not that type of company. I'm not that type of agent. We're going to make one cohesive decision that gives us the best chance to help your situation, but also get you approved. I'm not just going to splatter out 20, 30 of them. But I remember she said it in the conversation, and then I got on, and then I said it. And then the lady goes, why do you copy what she says? I go, what? She goes, everything you say, she's already said. <laughs> and I go, no, you understand. It's the other way around. She was like, I already heard the noodle thing. Y'all need to come up with something new. And I'm like, well, that's the, what I say. Oh, the spaghetti? Yeah, have you heard oh. that? Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, people the, use that. The, but... the spaghetti, but she used it 15 minutes prior. Right, but I mean, she does. if you mm -hmm. know you're handing it off to the person, I mean, like, it's okay to take that, uh -huh. but you, you can't take it from the person that you're actually going to be now passing it on to, right? Mm -hmm. So Brad has a saying that he really likes, and Brad is the person I'm going to hand the person off to. The last thing I should be using is Brad's lines. Well, you have to but, say it's a quote, you know? Uh -huh. You can say Brad always says this and this instead of, you know, you saying it, because there's a lot of little cutesy things that you can throw in there, especially when you trying to figure out what to say or whatever you know and if it's not your own you know say hey you know so and so in the office always says this and, or that um that way you won't get in trouble but yeah you, you have to when it comes to humor um you really have to be careful of what you say you know you yeah. You have to have that relationship with the client, kind of feel, you know, what is their sense of humor before you can start interjecting things that are going to get them entertained, you know, because um, you can go the wrong way, uh, you know, because I, I know in the application, it says, uh, you know, are you a legal resident of the United States? And I was talking to somebody in California. And I said, you know, I don't know if that's an advantage anymore. Something I throw in. And she got offended. <laughs> oh, that's a terrible thing to say. So, California State, those things. You know, so I mean, you have to be careful. You have to, before you say stuff like that, you have to know where they're at, you know, and, and it comes down to the discovery and finding out. <laughs> but, I can just see it in my head, like playing out. That's for me, I just try to keep it all like very like basic, you know, like that anyone can laugh at, you know. So if you like, you know, the weather, or something like that, something like so basic that like you won't really offend them. You know, I don't really try to, even though there might be some stuff that you can say that's kind of funny, but like you said, like you don't know how they're gonna take it, right? right. So you just mm -hmm. kind of you, you try to hold back as much as possible, I guess. I think too, you know, it's it's not really a, you know, stand up special that we're trying to put on every day here. I mean, I, I try. Not everybody tries. I try just because I like to. But um, that's what I find the joy in. Like doing a birthday call led to a ten minute conversation about Publishers Clearinghouse with the lady because I've worked with her now for years, and she was like, "Oh, what are you doing, boy?" And I go, "I got something special for you." She goes, "Really?" And I go, "Well." It's only today. That's why I'm calling. She's like, you bring me money? And I go, I'll show up with a big check. Right, right, right. She goes, well, I'm not there. I'm in Michigan. I'm visiting my sister. And I said, all right, well, what's, where does she live at in Michigan? I've got family there. And it just goes. But, two, there are some times where kind of a flip side where people get mad. 
And that's really one of the traits that you have to pick up is why is somebody mad at something? Why? Like I told a story a couple of weeks back about that lady that was just going, that canceled her plan G because the, the, the way that the doctors were billing her, she was having to pay for stuff and she was just going to go on straight Medicare. And then she went off on a tangent about presidents and the government and everything like that. And at that point, it's almost like you're fishing. You know, if they're taking out line, just let them take out line. Let her tire herself out a little bit. Mm -hmm. But as that fish is going, as she's talking, you're starting to figure out, number one, what makes that fish mad, but what type of person or what type of fish it is. So for her, her big thing was lack of control. That was everything she was talking about, the government, the president, how she can't do X, Y, Z. It's out of her control because this is happening. She can't do whatever it is. Okay. But I had to see that. I, you know, she's going like this, kept, you know, shaking her head, shaking her head. I'm like, okay, that's got to be a tune up. By the way, it's head shaking. Okay. Her issue is control. So then by the time that she's just talked everything out, because she's waiting for somebody to come back. Is what she's waiting for. She's waiting for somebody to, or just ride the coattail and say, "Okay, yeah, well, we don't, we don't talk about politics. Like, let me just go to the next one. Let her run, tire herself out, but realize she hates other people making decisions for her. That's why she doesn't like certain things. That's why she wanted to get rid of the plan. She really should have just got rid of the doctor. But from there, it was a moment that we kind of shared where. I'm not necessarily talking her off a ledge, trying to say, don't cancel your policy. Don't cancel your policy. I'm trying to figure out why you want to. Again, it goes funny how that all circles back into the emotions. Why are you canceling? Oh, it's because you feel like you don't have control because of the doctor that you're going to see. So it's one, it's, it's not always, you know, about making them laugh. Sometimes it's letting them talk. Yeah, let them vent. Let them vent because guess what? Everybody else that does it, they're just going to, they're not going to listen. They're not going to be proactive with it. They're not going to ask questions. They're not going to realize what's going on. They're going to say, oh, she's just complaining to complain. She's just an old woman who has somebody on the line and she's trying to push her views down. Your throat. But it's, it's one, you, you'll pick it up. The, the more you do it, the easier it is to pick up. That's for sure. So we are at one hour here. Yeah. Stefan, do you have anything? What, what, do you want to take us out today? Uh, I don't know. How does it end usually? Don't you just say, uh, I forgot who, how, to, how it ends. All right. I'll, yeah. I'll do it this time. Yeah. Uh, so thank you again <laughs> for, for joining us here for our dojo. Um, as always, uh, you know, we are Medicare gurus here, but uh, do go to insurasales.com to check out that platform. That was what we launched there at the 8% conference there last week. Uh, there is far in allotment. So many tools that are available to you right now. We do have our um, CRM that is up that you can look through. Um, we also have some trainings that are available and some with Brandon himself too. Um, but as well, that's where our insure link is. Um, so it's our only agent social media where there's no marketing. Um, there's nothing like that. No ads. It is just agents posting about themselves or other agents. And if you look, you'll actually find some pretty cool uh, photos we took uh, from last week too, doing some team stuff. So as always, welcome back, number one. Uh, number two, we will see you tomorrow, same time as always, 12 o'clock Central. Y'all have a great day and sell something. Great day, everybody.